At Highland, we're all about celebrating little wins and little ways to innovate digital processes. There's no customer pain point too small for us to help with. Maybe that's why more than half of the Fortune 100 looks to Highland to connect their content and data, improve processes, and turn little efficiencies into big wins for their customers and clients. Highland, intelligent content solutions for innovators everywhere at highland.com. Welcome to The Inevitable. This is Motor Trend's new podcast about the future of the automobile. I am Johnny Lieberman, the Senior Features Editor at Motor Trend, and I am joined every week by my co-host, Mr. Ed Lowe. That's me. I'm the Head of Editorial for Motor Trend, and boy, do we have an amazing list of guests that we're going to be chatting with. We've got the godfather of the environmental movement, Ed Bagley Jr. Derek Jenkins, a whole bunch of actors, celebrities, car crazy folks, people from in and outside the industry. Industry. Can't wait for you to join us. We're talking about the future of the car. This means everything from electrified vehicles to cars that drive themselves. Come check us out. We're on podcastone.com or anywhere else you find your favorite podcast. We're also on motortrend.com and youtube.com slash motortrend. Well, we've got a fun episode of CarCast. We're, uh, we're going to talk to our good friend, Gail Banks. We're going to get into compound supercharging and all sorts of testing of vehicles that he is just the best at. Uh, Before we get started, here's Geico. Do you own? Do you rent your home? Sure you do. And it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you have so much to do already around your home. Why not make it easy? Go to Geico.com, get a quote, and see just how much you could save. It's Geico Easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Hey, guys. Welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the motivator. DeAndre here with Bill Goldberg. What's up, man? Man, traveling. Just up in the air, landing again. Little... I feel like I just drove the 24 hours of a <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and airplanes and everything else. Um, yeah, just a little, little quick trip out here. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't know. You had some work to do. We got a chance to see some family and, and, uh, yeah, I, I, what do you, you do? Know, I haven't been to San Diego in three years and I, uh, go for 48 hours pretty much. Uh, it was a great event, dude. I, I went out for the JCC Maccabi games, which basically is the Jewish Olympics for kids you know, 12 to 16 years old in the, not only in the United States, but they had some participants from Israel and Mexico, and a bunch from Canada. It was, it was just a cool get together, man. Obviously me being Goldberg, it was, uh, it was, it was a great opportunity to shed some uh, wisdom upon 1500 to 2000 Jewish kids that, you know, are the main reason why I kept my freaking name in wrestling and the uh, reason why I've done a lot of the things that I've done. So it was a it was a great honor of mine. Yeah. And they presented me with the first gold medal of the Olympics <laughs> there, so of the Maccabi game. So it was fun, man. Did you get a chance to uh, swing by your brother's restaurant? Uh, he's got oh. the belly up, which I know Chris is very familiar with the belly up down in uh, San Diego. Great place, great venue, the comedy, music, all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, COVID screwed up a lot of people, but it gave him the ability to redo that place. And uh, I, I don't think the nooks and crannies have been cleaned out in the belly up for 30 years. man. It was <laughs> absolutely stenchy. Right. But uh, but I mean, the thing's got character beyond character as a live music place in Southern California. And it's always been known as the go to place for the, for the badass little concerts and um, but it is completely rehauled. It's absolutely beautiful, but they've been able to keep the feel of the original place, which is the reason why people go there in the beginning. So, um, yeah, I went there, went his went to his restaurant, Pacific Coast Grill in Del Mar. And, um, yeah, I've uh, I, I definitely had my fill of his food uh, for <laughs> a 48 hour period. Um, yeah, it was awesome. But uh, I had a great time. Dude. I had a great time. It's uh, it's. And hopefully, it, we'll get bravado down there. You know? Yeah, we're gonna get some bravado down there. We're gonna have some updates on that soon. We, I got some of the samples in. Been trying the product. It's all fantastic. There's a few uh, production line issues, but just growing pains, as you can imagine, with any any new company like this. And 
I'm not, I'm not sure how, but we've got two different. Uh, I mean, I know how we got two different product lines, but we're manufacturing them in two two different products, two different locations in wildly different parts of the country, and both are coming back with with issues. I was like. I tell you, it can get frustrating. It's like, I just, where's the accountability? It's like, what what are you guys going to do about this problem? They're like, eh, I guess we'll just, you know, get to it when we get to it. I was like, what about all the money I spent? What about all the time we invested? Who's going to pay us back for that? And they're like, eh. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> that, that's not I'm quite not cool. only an investor, I'm also uh, a watchdog. So just let me know. We're going to have to send you down there and start figuring out what's what's going on down there. Make sure we get the right. Oh, absolutely. We, we can make a personal visit to the uh, factory. Absolutely. Oh, man. We, we should anyway. Maybe. It's getting closer to that point than, than you think. But anyway, um, oh, you were telling me about a car wash thing that was going on. Tell what, What's going on with that? This, well, I mean, obviously with this debacle we call the Goldberg's Garage Bill uh, <laughs> over the past three years, I've kind of gone back and forth. Uh, modern wash, the people that I originally – hooked up with uh, to, to build the garage. Ironically, they, they build car washes, but they're commercial units and they're just obviously not what I'm looking for. So for the past six months, I've been looking for uh, a company that could provide, you know, single day stuff as far as, you know, one, one, one stop shop, you know, because people do these, these wash bays in varying ways. And I just want something clean that does exactly what I need. And this company I found, Coleman Hanna, they've got this product called Splash and Dash, which literally is a self-contained box that has all the pumps, has all the liquids, has all the mixing ability, the ability to mix all the all the stuff. It's all selectorized. It's just like going to, to a car wash. They're, they're pretty reasonable, man. And so uh, I, I absolutely love the product as far as looking at it online, but we're going to try to get them out here and get some stuff done. It's it's uh, something that's going to be definitely needed at the place, and uh, hopefully this cures the solution, or this is the solution. So yeah, I like the idea. So you're saying you're going to have like a wash bay at the garage, or you know, outside the garage, maybe. Well, yeah. When you say a wash bay, I mean this thing is freaking. It, it's it's comparable to the rest of the structure. So I mean, it's completely overbuilt, but it's a double length wash bay you know yeah. one single bay and then it's it backs up to it so it's not two side by side it's just double the length so we're just going to go with 360 boom right in the middle of it and uh, i'll be able to pull just about anything into that damn thing whether it's a winnebago or uh, you know one of the, the trx's but yeah and it's like i said it's got every, everything that you go get at a, at a self-serve car wash i mean go to go to the website it's bitching it's it, the unit that they have is really cool obviously they they supply, you know, all car wash or many car washes around the country. And it's to, to have a self-contained unit for personal use that's not a commercial unit. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to find them. Believe me, I've been looking. So hopefully this this um, is the solution. I'm too short to wash a, a, a TRX. You'd have to lower me down uh, from the ceiling like Tom Cruise in the the first mission, <laughs> impossible. whatever the third mission impossible. Like <laughs> when he's breaking into that vault, you have to kind of lower me down so I can wash the top of that truck. I don't even think I've seen the top of my Ford Lightning, and that truck has been lowered. I can almost look over it, but uh, not oh, quite. Oh yeah, dude, I've, <laughs> mine's the thirty sevens and the and the, the travel that that thing's got. I can't even. I, I don't even know if I've seen the top of it yet. So. Uh, I'll have some scaffolding in there or something. Yeah, you have to come up with something. But uh, like you said, if you if you roll a you know a motorhome or some sort of RV or something big in there, you want to be able to to get up on top, walk around, and and uh, and 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 wash it, but not slide off the top of that thing and land on the ground. <laughs> you know, you don't want to break. Well, your ass, a thousand but... <laughs> percent. You know, and, and, uh, another thing that people another thing that people don't take into consideration. Unfortunately, I have. Um, are these big hand dryers that are offered um, because out here with the water as hard as it is, although it'll have spot free rinse and stuff like that. But the best solution that I found for cleaning these or for drying these cars off is a freaking blower. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I got one. Yeah. It yeah. Helps exponentially. So that'll, that'll be in the package too. So, uh, so we, hopefully it'll, it'll be badass. 
We've got Gail Banks uh, uh, joining us, or we'll bring Gail Banks in. But, yeah, I went over to um, our friends over at Chemical Guys, and they set me up with I, – I just got basically just like a wheeled cart, and I've got all the various uh, soaps and cleaners and sprays and polishes and stuff. But I have their their foam gun, and, uh, you know, I went over to my, my warehouse early th- this weekend. I was heading out to the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. It was at the Hot Wheels Mattel headquarters in El Segundo, California, by LAX. And I went by uh, my warehouse first Saturday morning pretty early. I was able to give the car a wash. But you're right. I, I've i washed it before with, with their stuff um, the, several times, the cars in, in my truck. But uh, this is the first time I was able to um, get the blower out. I got the hand blower from, from Chemical Guys and – Kind of like a big hair dryer, but they're also very smart. Where like the the nozzle for that thing is a soft rubber, so if you need a if you accidentally hit the door or hit something like that, you know it's it, it's not it's going to be fine. Uh, and it definitely Dude, helps I use, out. I use my lawn blower. Yeah, yeah. I I, I used to. I so I, I, you know, pushes like two hundred and fifty mile per hour wind out of it. I mean, the thing is absolutely bitching. The air compressor really works well for that. Except my air compressor is at one end of the shop, and then to go all the way out, you know, through the shop and then out the door, it's it's not. I don't have a hose long enough. I I I, I probably need a hundred foot hose. I got like a fifty foot. Um, so it was it was you know, pretty close. But hit the blower and uh, the handheld blower, and it works really well, as you can imagine. Around. Uh, uh, the mirrors for sure, door handles, all the, the door jams and, um, a lot of the front grill of the car, right? Cause you've got so many different <laughs> openings and stuff. And then I still wiped it down a little bit, but it was a hell of a lot easier to just hit it with the blower for a few minutes first and, oh, man. and get it done. Uh, and, and there's has, um, by the way, has like this foam filter on the bottom. So it's not. It's not like you're just taking a leaf blower and doing it because, you know, it could suck up stuff and start firing at your car like a like a BB gun. That's the last thing you want. You want to make sure you're getting clean, clean air. So I'm sure the systems that you were looking at has to have some sort of filtration system on it. My my air compressor though, I've got two filters on the air compressor, um, uh, so I could use the you know the, the air compressor if I was going to do that. I do that because you want all of your air guns to be you know very very clean. You want any contaminants and stuff in there. So. Um, I've got the Absolutely. the filters and stuff through there. Uh, all right, so I th- I see the guys from Banks over there. I see uh, I see I see Jay roaming around. Let's get Jay on the mic. What's going on, buddy? I don't know if we can hear Jay or there, Jay's muted. How about now? There you, you go. I got him. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I am just. I spoke with uh, Gail just a few moments ago. He is uh, rolling up, so he will be there here in just a few moments doing it from my desk i think it'd be the easiest way to make it happen so hey we you and i i ran into you at the at the hot wheels legends tour you had the lockjaw out there this is the crazy truck that we you debuted <laughs> at, at at sema and an ongoing project there's still some things to work out uh yes but that i think went over really well over at uh over at the hot wheels legends tour it kind of fit the the, the hot wheels theme I think so too. I, I think so. We're we're editing a video right behind me. So Jobers, one of our video editors, is chopping up a video of us uh, upsetting security at. Uh, <laughs> I think were you there, Matt? When we security was not thrilled by the uh, the, the sheer output of our exhaust, like the and, noise, Bill, like it was insane. Very sorry that I wasn't there to see and to hear it. it, it it's like, kind of it, nuts. I I wasn't there when they fired it up, but. It, this is this is like flying a military plane at this point, where you, you can't have two people in the front of this truck without headphones and microphones. <laughs> it's it's wildly so, so loud. That, so so that is true. By the way, um, guys, I ordered um, an actual headset from like a hook and ladder. Right, the guys in the back of the hook and ladder, they've got to talk to the front. Yeah. So I have the actual because it's so freaking loud inside the cab. You can't hear the person sitting. <laughs> 18 inches from your shoulder like it's that crazy we were standing there i think it was when matt was around there and one of the guys from mattel rolled up and he said hey this is cool how does it sound and i say well i'm told we can't start up the engines because there's crowds and blah 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 and he says he whips out his mattel badge and says this is my event go ahead and fire it up (laughs) nice so i just got in and i just romped on it brought it to like 3700 rpm and just we've posted a few videos of this and you cannot, this is a straight pipe 
D, D, V8 diesel, right? This is a Duramax. And it's straight pipe because it's supercharged. Normally, you've got a turbo on every diesel pickup truck you've ever had. It's You've got a turbo. And a turbo is the world's greatest muffler. Yeah. You get some nice turbo wine, but that's about it. You get the normal out of the exhaust. Well, there's nothing to damp that exhaust note anymore. <clears throat> it is these beautiful Candela manufacturing long tube headers that are all of equal length. It's the most amazing sound into a really beautiful set of uh, collectors and then a 17 inch conical muffler that you'd see on like a Harley bagger (laughs) that's hidden up under the cab. And then it goes and it widens up to a five inch outlet. And that is, I don't know, there's maybe 40 inches of five inch pipe right to the twin outlets on either side. Uh, So right behind the cab, you've got these, and so at idle, it's just go, 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 like a big block. I mean, it sounds like a big block until you get on it. And then it's raspy in a way that you've never heard of diesel ever. And it just, it's, it goes through your skull. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. What a great uh, explanation. So, can- and, it, and I will tell you this. So Matt and, and, and Bill, for, for as many vehicles we're talking about, I think Gail is going to be discussing your TRX, right? Yeah. And I recently picked one up. I have a 22 TRX. I got it three weeks ago. I have 570 miles on it. I just, I can finally do launch mode. I haven't even done it yet. Yeah. Like it just turned the odometer 500, which all of a sudden launch mode screen is enabled, right? But that truck is really responsive, but it's nothing like Lockjaw. Lockjaw is a light switch. You just... Mm-hmm touch the throttle it's whack 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 before we started blowing off the boost at idle it was 12 almost 12 pounds at idle it was <laughs> insane and so now we've got a really intricate system to blow off the uh basically at idle we're blowing off i think all but a pound of boost and then as soon as we as soon as we go past idle, we close the valve, and then it directs it down, of course, into the into the manifold through the uh, intercooler into the manifold. Well, lead me down the path of righteousness with the TRX. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, I that's what did, I, I already did the first one a certain way, and I want to do the second one a different way. So you know, I'm I'm open for options. So I've been looking at this. I've been researching the same thing because I'm looking. At, I've seen the guys with the Ripatuned twin turbo setup that hang under the belly I, i'm not a i'm not a i don't know what method you chose the first go around didn't twin turbo it just injectors and fuel system and you know we're pushing 850 to the tires he just boosted the factory you know pulleys some boost uh, fuel system okay. on the factory system just to kind of push to see where they can get the factory system and they, they're getting about 850 to the tires with Stock blower, I think it's ported. Is it ported? Was yeah. the blower? Yeah, yeah he ported so, the snout, right? So, so ported blower, uh, fuel system upgrade, some additional boost, um, and I, I think it's Inject- and injectors. But uh, but I think you guys also made it E85 capable, yeah. right? Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I see the guys uh, pushing the big horsepower to do an E85. Man, but I do not this. want this next one E85 by any stretch of imagination. I don't want to keep searching for it. That's too much of a pain in the ass. So there it seems to be that you can get quite a bit out of it with the stock blower and pulleys, upper and lower. And the tune is really what matters here. It's, mm-hmm. it's going to be all about the tune. And I think Gail may touch on that in a, in a few minutes here. I gave him a bunch of, I went nuts with stats for him this morning. So <laughs> I've got a, a list of stats about the Hellcat. With, with stock, what I found out talking to friends of ours like Corey Willis, who's tuned, he had a TRX and his his shop PPEI throughout mm-hmm. Louisiana, and they have tuned quite a few of them. And stock, and I know yours is not stock, but if a guy just rolls in with a TRX or a Hellcat, there is a certain point at which that ECM doesn't want the extra boost, mm-hmm. and it will start. You'll have an over over boost condition, right? <laughs> And we're trying to ascertain what that is. And I'm sure that there are some tuners out there that know, but it's, I think it's as little as a pound and a half, mm-hmm. 1.5 PSI, and maybe as much as four. But beyond that, um, it doesn't matter how you pulley it or what kind of, if you add another set of turbos prior to your supercharger, the engine's going to fight you. The ECM's just, it, there's a, a narrow window for that, mm-hmm. right? So then you get into all of the the tuning, and then I think kind of sky is the limit with that engine. Gotcha. Does yeah, the- that's what I think. It's, there's so many options and so many different ways to go with it. I'm going to wait a little while and see where you go. 
<laughs> yeah. I, 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 so th- those 500 miles of break-in miles, by the way, were probably like the most stressful week of Goldberg's life. Waiting, waiting to 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 break in that no, first come on, five. Give me a break, dude. <laughs> it, it, hey, no. At this point, I I took the thing with three miles on or five miles on it to Houston for for Gage's bite baseball tournament. So if you think I wasn't going 80, well, no, I was going the speed limit. But we're in, we're in Texas. So there's 85, some, some places, right? So yeah. if you think I, lay, I didn't lay on that son of a bitch before the 500 <laughs> after it's, about my 15th Hellcat motor, you're crazy. So, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is what it is. Uh, all right, Jay, thanks so much. Uh, Jay, you, of course, you can stick around. I um, But uh, Gail Banks, uh, the man, the legend, welcome back. We, uh, we, huh. We've been having these conversations while uh, for a while about uh, – about Bill Goldberg's uh, Ram TRX. And I know we always get into some really, really cool stuff on the show, but the reason why I wanted to uh, to invite you back on the show in this instance was Bill's got one TRX already that, uh, as we were just talking about, has modified what the stock stuff, ported blower, additional fuel, uh, pulleys, yep. and, uh, and, and it's E85 capable, some big uh, fuel injectors. Gets about 850 to the tires, but he bought a second TRX, which he does not want to run on E85. So we're looking for ways to make power on pump gas. Now, keep in mind, uh, Gail, he's in Texas. He's got the good stuff, the 93, not the shit we got out here in Ah. California. So that is a little bit of a difference. Um, But one of the things that has come up. Another man who went to Texas (laughs) from California. Yeah. 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 Uh, Absolutely. I led the charge, though, because it was two months before COVID hit. That's right. It was like three years ago. He he was wheels up before COVID was even like a thing. Perfect timing. You know, it just. Uh, So the thing that has come up a few times is compound boost. And I know you've experimented with this and had a lot of success with it, but figured out some of the the issues with compound boost. Now, the easy solution would be we mount a couple of twin turbos somewhere on the motor, maybe down low by the bell housing right off the catalytic converters and blow it in mm-hmm. and, and, and go into the supercharger. But Belly mount. Yeah, but the thought is maybe the supercharger isn't designed to have boost on the front end. It's only designed to put air out the back end. So that's the setup. Tell us a little bit about it. What What's your thoughts on compound boost, and can it be done to a stock setup like this? Well, people have done it. Uh, <laughs> Successfully, I, I, or are they break shit? It's successful. <laughs> well, well, that's why go. we're asking you. <laughs> I mean, you you're, see all this the guru, stuff. right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, you, you see all this stuff where this has been done, one turbo, two turbos into a supercharger, but never any results. Exactly. Fact, they did it and everybody said, you know, Ooh, we've done it and we've done it in spades and we've done it both ways. So super turbo is one way and uh, with the supercharger first. And what we're talking about is turbo supercharged that's the other way yeah and that's the easiest way to to do it in the truck uh the the thing you find is first of all how do you size the turbos secondly how much will the blower tolerate in other words you you said it matt a second ago that uh is the blower really designed to take boosted air boosted air uh, indicates that the air density is increased in other words how many pounds of air per cubic foot or I like to talk thousand cubic feet on a standard day there uh, you're close to sea level probably in Texas aren't you Bill yes sir. you know we're here we're what 600 feet above sea level you're probably similar nominally you you've got about 70 pounds of air per thousand cubic feet the engine pumps so the blower is designed to induct and compress from that air density you start putting in Higher air density when, you know, guys talk about the boost. Uh, You have this other issue, though, which is the temperature. So I don't talk boost much other other than a number of, along with temperature and humidity, where I compute the density because it's pounds of air you mix with pounds of fuel to make the number. So pounds of boost does not tell you pounds of air. Mm -hmm. It's a convenient, easy gauge to have. You know, years ago, I I used oil pressure gauges for boost, but I've grown up. 
So, <laughs> so here we got this machine that's designed to compress ambient air, and we're we're going to thicken up the air. Well, the screw type blowers that are very common today compress air inside the uh, the blower itself, so they have a compression ratio, so to speak. The air coming out and into the engine is heated by that compression ratio. So two things. If you're going to put turbos first, then you got to have a charge air cooler before you hit the blower. Anytime you compound it, you don't have, that's where you get charge air cooler, after cooler, intercooler, all those words. We call them all charge air coolers. Intercoolers are between supercharging elements. In other words, mm-hmm. in your, they're between the, in a compound turbo, they should be right after the first turbo. Most of the compounds I, I see, if you ran them long enough, would melt the compressor or frag the compressor in the second uh, turbocharger. These guys get away with drag race, but beyond that, you know, here at Banks, we've been durability and I love endurance racing, long races, hundreds of miles or multiple days. It doesn't matter. I'll take it all. My heart rate isn't up long enough uh, in a three or four second drag race. I want my heart rate up for hours. Exactly. Adrenaline rush. I mean, uh, as you get older, it's even more sporting. So, so here we got this problem. We've got boosted hot air going into the blower and the blower is going to heat the air some more. (laughs) And the rotors are going to get too big to fit in the blower case. And you're going to wipe the whole freaking thing out. That's the end of the result. Yeah, they're going to swell up. The metal will swell up with that kind of heat. And the rotors will potentially hit the case and screw it all up for sure. It's kind of interesting because the uh, the rotors will also uh, get longer and hit the ends of the, yeah, the, that's know, the end covers. Yeah. <laughs> We've done it both ways, actually. <laughs> 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 All the I, ways so that... I tried it with the roots. I got I got a eight seventy one, you know the old GMC numbers. Mm-hmm. Got a really good looking black anodized eight seventy one and blew into that and the tips of you, you know the uh, uh, OG of the rotor. The rotors contacted each other and it killed the case and I killed them killed. A, Few thousand dollars worth of supercharger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I had. Well, it's all in R and D. That's with the, that's with intercooling in between. So <laughs> there's a limit. You can increase the power. Uh, I imagine your number is at least a thousand. I mean, it, you're not in a club and, anymore. <laughs> I remember when it was 500 horsepower. Yeah. Now, now it's if you're not rocking a thousand horsepower, you're you're not in a conversation. <laughs> exactly. and Nobody wants to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. No question. Nobody wants I have to, talk to be to a conversation. Who wants to be down below it? Yeah, Nobody. know what we're talking about. Nobody. You know, it's doable in Texas. I wish I was in Texas. To tell you the truth, <laughs> because I wouldn't worry so much about carb if I were in Texas. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, you know, poor Jay Leno. He's <laughs> yeah. he's got a guy that just handles. Yeah, he does it, you know what I mean? Guy. Steve, yeah. I think is. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, anyhow, here, here, here we are. I want to, if I do it, I want to do a lot of, a lot of, not just experiment, but experiment and then sell it. If you do this, you could do the belly mount turbos, pumping the oil back into the oil pan is the problem because you can't gravity feed belly mounts. Mm-hmm. They're usually somewhat below the oil level. We've done a lot of research on uh, oil pumps for that. Uh, I do intend to do some belly mounts for pony cars, you know, the mm-hmm. the ones that remain at the end of the day. Uh, I don't know about GM. I don't know about Ford, but it, it looks like uh, Stellantis, you know, Chrysler. Mm-hmm. Uh, those guys are still on the beam. And we're all talking about a Chrysler Hemi here. Yep. So. Uh, they seem to be like uh, the last company that will actually show uh, a performance car or truck smoking the tires. 
Yep. Getting, <laughs> you know, and they're not, well, not done yet. Chances are, I it's hope not. Chances are, it's it's Bill and Sam Uvinette that are ones that are smoking the tires. At least in all the videos <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, the, and the TV commercials, it's it's those two guys. Uh, yeah. So Gail, uh, so compound boost is not recommended, uh, or super turbo or turbo turbo super charging is not necessarily recommended in this scenario. So what we're looking at next would be maybe a supercharger swap because Bill's already modified and kind of taken to the limit the stock supercharger program, ported it, injectors, whatever. But, yeah. um, you know, we, we've been hearing from the friends at Whipple that they may be making a larger supercharger. What is what is your take on on supercharger sizing? Can you just go for the biggest one and uh, yeah. and and that's it? Or is it kind of like sizing turbo? Because turbos we hear a lot of, hey, you can't go too big on turbo. You'll never be able to spool it up. There's no power on the low end. You know, you got to make all this RPM to spin the big turbo. So you want a smaller turbo. Yeah. Like, are we are we talking about something similar if it's belt driven like a supercharger? Yeah, it would be hellaciously difficult to put the tur- uh, supercharger first uh, uh, through a set of turbos. If you could pull that off under the truck, it would be the place to do it. Yeah, we are doing that. Uh, we are building a marine engine. Uh, where where the supercharger is first, we we did some for the Navy a while back. Uh, the Special Forces guys tested down at Coronado. Uh, we did uh, super turbo Duramax diesels in the 800 horsepower range. It was a a soft cal for endurance. Worked real good. You got to elevate the supercharger. You elevate the supercharger. We go through a charge air cooler out to the turbos, back uh, from the turbos to uh, another charge air cooler and into the engine. It's quite a package. That doesn't exist for, for you, Bill. The easier way to do it would be a big blower. And especially, you know, we do an awful lot uh, with Dustin Whipple. I've known his dad since he got going in this business, and Art is still around when I swing by there. I've been building a house in Yosemite with a floor plan layout like a section through a V8. I call mm-hmm. it the V8 house. <laughs> and and I've been going up there for years. And occasionally I'll hit Whippo because they're in Fresno. Uh, and that's uh, almost directly on my route. So it's always cool to go by and hang with those guys. Dustin has worked through a number of engineers to find the crew he's got now and I don't know if he's on Gen 5 or Gen 6, uh, but, but he's constantly improving what he does. And we're, we're the recipient of that. On, on our uh, Lockjaw truck project, we have encountered, we went, went to a high-speed big blower, 3.8 liter. You're running a 2.4 liter, right, Bill? I think that's what it is. I'm really not sure what it is. Yeah, I, I think that is, that's where it is. I think Dustin has something for this, or is real yeah, close. Does. Yeah, does. you've been talking with him. Yes, sir. Yeah, like it's just coming yeah. out. There's a few shops that are testing it, like uh, Goldberg. Uh, yeah. um, Gear, Gearhead Fabrications down in Florida. Yeah, uh-huh. the, Gearhead's been uh, doing some testing for Whipple, I think, for this. The caution is the rotor sets by design have a sweet spot by that uh, the most efficient are. RP- Lower RPM, mm-hmm. uh, where it heats the air minimum. You know, in other words, if this is purely a drag race project where you're going to buzz it all the time, uh, you'd want a certain rotor set. Mm-hmm. If it's a street project, you don't want that rotor set. You want a uh, rotor set uh, where the sweet spot is at a lower RPM. Mm-hmm. And with that truck, I mean, yeah, yanking it through the gears, I think it is 3.8 liter would really be kind of a, a good match here. Uh, t- too much blower, big parasitic. You know, blowers make horsepower, but they also use horsepower. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you want to match the blower. Don't overblower it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cat down in Florida, you know what, what size he's working with? Don't know. Yeah, you, know you mean the newest one from Will? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. We kind of test stuff for... Whipple as well. I think it's the best place to go. 
Uh, it's not super corporate, you know, dealing with them, mm-hmm. uh, where others, IHI or Eaton, well, Eaton feeds most blower manufacturers, rotor sets, and then they mm-hmm. do the case and all, all the other jive. That would be Edelbrock and all those guys. So I, I'm really anxious to, you know, Lightning's got one of those. <laughs> yeah, he does. Same, same one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I've been I've been speaking with Dustin for the last couple months. One of my decisions to buy the truck was mm-hmm. was Dustin when we were working on Lockjaw, and he was going through and sizing up and working with Gail with the three point eight. He had mentioned like, oh yeah, I, I was going to get a Ford F one fifty with a Coyote or uh, this this TRX with the 6.2 liter supercharged, right, Hellcat. And um, no matter what I was going to do, I was going to end up with a, a Whipple supercharger. Mm-hmm. And of course, now I get the, the I get the TRX, and now I'm getting cold feet. I don't want to violate the warranty because it's the most expensive <laughs> truck I've ever owned. So oh, I don't yeah. make the bill don't be a baby. <laughs> don't be a baby. But look at where he's working. Look at where he's working. He's working at banks. Yeah, that's what I said. So, uh, Gail. Um, <laughs> Uh, just a, a quick look. It looks like the Hellcat engines, not the Elephant Crate engine. The Hellcat engines are 2.4 liter superchargers, yep. and the new Whipple mm-hmm. is the Gen 5 3 liter yep. supercharger. So, ah, yes, that, yes, 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 that would be perfect. That yeah. would be perfect. <laughs> Running in the back of my head, the 3.8 is too big. Yeah, yeah, 3.8 would yeah. be too big. So, the Elephant Crate oh. engines that are a thousand horsepower are mm-hmm. three liter. Superchargers as well, but Whipple is they're saying HIs. Yeah, so Whipple is saying that no. their design and the way they do theirs, it could be uh, more efficient than the factory Elephant motor. So, um, to to Gail's point, it could make more horsepower because it takes less horsepower to spin it. Right, yep. so it's still three yep. liter, but instead of you know taking a hundred horsepower to spin it, it could take you know eighty, and that compounds as you increase in horsepower, right? So in, in RPM, yeah. so uh, it, it looks yeah. to be a cool piece uh, that you know, as we said, so Whipple's designed it. They sent it out a few to their to their big dealers installers. They're they're getting a few people around the country to install them, to test them, to tune them, and and give all the feedback and uh, uh, it seems interesting. That kind of feels like Bill, maybe the way to go. Now yeah, the 100%. difference is I, I was waiting for him to come out with it on the first year. Yeah. Obviously. And then I wasn't going to wait. And so we went the direction that we went. And so it's a, it's a perfect time. Now, because so, it's so new, uh, uh, Gail, the, the thing that's going to get your attention is, is, I don't think Whipple yet has a kit with a tune. I think they're putting it out as a quote unquote Ooh. tuner kit so far. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. whoever installs it needs to be responsible for that tune so far. That's why it's not a turnkey kit from Whipple yet. I'm not saying it won't yeah. be. It's possible it could be at some point. Uh so you know Gail, if you installed one on Lightning's truck and you guys did the tune, that would be yeah, a yeah. different tune than what would go on Goldberg's truck, mostly because him being in Texas and his 93 octane. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we can tune for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, mild with, alteration. Yeah. yeah. With a smile and a wink. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, and, I, and guys, I would be, sorry to jump in there, I would be fascinated to see the temps above and beneath the intercooler, oh, yeah. et cetera, especially on his setup. Uh, he, Dustin may or may not have those figures and we have the sensors. So uh, you know, Bill, when you get ready to do that, I don't know if the truck will be transportable. It could come up here or we can send a sensor suite down to you. Mm-hmm. But I know the TRX does have a few sensors. I've been playing with them, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have as many as Gail would like to see to really evaluate the data. Absolutely. So if you're up for it, I'd love to put a package together of our iDash data monster and some sensors, send them down to your team and install them when you're putting the new supercharger on. Oh, yeah, this is incredibly informative. Here, 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 yeah. Here's the deal. Anything you want to do, just let me know. We'll you know, the, we, we'll we'll we made a decision on the blower. What about the intercooler? What about charge air cooler? Would you be running the stock one? Is it enough? Uh, that's what you'll find out with our uh, with uh, sensors. forced induction. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a it's it's a forced in, in, induction development kit. Once you get used to reading the numbers, mm-hmm. you, it's habit forming. I mean, it's addictive. This is how we find. Hey, we're going to kill this blower because if we're pushing through it with turbos. I think it would also help Dustin because I'd love to feed your data back to him so he can improve yeah. what he's doing. So he does, of course, he does charge air coolers. And I think with the three liter, he'll probably come up with one. Then you get to how much overdrive should I run? Mm-hmm. Should I go for the most boost I can get? Well, one thing we, uh, guys find with our uh, blower evaluation package is it pull it up or pull it down, uh, spin up. Uh, the speed of the blower, get more boost and go slower because Uh the air is so much hotter. You've gone past that sweet spot in the Mm -hmm. RPM and it just superheats the air. The intercooler can't handle and it starts to detonate. Mm -hmm. Then the calibration pulls back the, uh, whatever. Yeah. Timing and whatever, whatever. Yeah. It it tries to play safe with the engine and, you're fighting distance. Retarding timing is one way that happens. But you're not, you know, guys will go, out, hey, I got more boost, but I'm going slower. What the hell's up, Banks? I'm going, <laughs> well, <laughs> what's the temperature of the air going into the engine? Yeah. yeah. Because the stock setup sensing that, and if it gets hot enough, they pull back uh, the calibration to save the engine. Yeah. So then you'll know. You know, yeah, it's the guys that cast it in Florida. If they're doing this, they're going to well, do this for you or whoever. Uh, so, you know, if, if Dustin comes out with a kit, it's going to be real complete. Absolutely. Your real problem is going to be the calibration. Mm-hmm. I mean, I actually did a little red truck project to go to um, that Woodward Dream Cruise mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in Detroit. I did it for Chrysler. You remember the little red truck yes, they did years ago? Well, they did a modern one. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had me turbo the thing. Mm-hmm. And nobody at Chrysler would talk to me about the calibration. And it was their own project. What yeah. the hell? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of went, well, this is a bummer. <laughs> uh, so we kind of jerry-rigged it. It sat on Woodward, uh, a display on Woodward with the hood up and banks all over the engine. And I kind of went. I, I can't sell this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How the hell do I sell this? So, you know, I've been thinking about, they have nuclear hardened these things. You can't get into them easily. Yeah. Uh, how do we do this? I think the biggest question is how do you calibrate what mm-hmm. you're doing here? Sounds have, you, like have you got to need it? Somebody said a minute ago, you were around 800 plus horsepower. Is there a tune to go along with that? Uh, on the first TRX, yeah. Uh, he's yeah, got two of them. The first one, that's the E85 truck. Gearhead did it down in Florida. Okay. They, they've, been, they've been messing with these, these Hellcats for ever since they came out. They're, I would say on this coast, they're the preeminent you know, tuners. For so they've kind of cracked it. Uh, Yes. To you. Yeah. Yes. So, sir. so Gail, they, they've done some pretty big builds, you know, 15, 1600 horsepower drag race vehicles. Uh, with these they Hellcat did the engines, twin turbo charger that, that's pushing fourteen hundred. Yeah, that's yeah. right. They and and all the uh, like the speed core cars and probably Ralph Jill's car, your buddy Ralph, his new car, his charger that he's rolling yeah. around in. I, that might have a Hellfin engine in it, but uh, it it, it, are you talking about Chrysler, Ralph? Yeah, Ralph Jill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, Say hi to him. Yeah, yeah. His uh, absolutely because I think um, gearheads have done some stuff for him as well on his own personal project. So uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> there you are. Exactly. There you are. So, so you know that somehow they have the back door to, to some of the information. Well, they've sure. either got the back door or they changed in the ECU. Yeah, one or the other. Something sure. like a Motec or whatever. Yeah, I can't Those say guys for are pretty sure. Clever. Okay, so that's it on the TRX stuff. Uh, I just got uh, one other one other thought to run by you. This is a different project that Bill knows. Actually, Lightning is familiar with this project. So, I have yeah. um I have a twenty twenty one Mustang Mach one. Uh, you'll see it. It's going over to SEMA this year. It's going to be in the Anderson Composites booth, and our friends at Anderson uh-huh. Composites had made a carbon fiber hood with a hood scoop on it, kind of 
old school <laughs> Mach 1 hood scoop. But yeah. underneath the hood, they built some ducting that goes over to the it, the Mach 1 has a, a an air box, but it's kind of an open element that seals around the hood. So their hood yeah. scoop goes to the factory box. You know, and it looks cool and it's meant to be a cosmetic thing. And we said, let's make it functional. We don't know if it's functional, but we tried to make it functional. So this is where uh, this is where you come in. You can explain the testing to me, but this is my thought would be I would love to put, as you said, maybe uh, your air mouse in that box. And yep. we're probably looking for density and temperature and then tape off the hood scoop, run yep. the car I don't know. Maybe oh, we oh. run baseline tests, 20 mile an hour, 40 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour, and then take the tape off and do it again, 20, 40, 60 mile an hour. I don't know if it's increasing any pressure. I don't know if it's just maybe cold air. Maybe it's just bringing in a little bit of fresh air. We have no idea. But this yeah, seems no, like it, right up your alley as far as well how to test yeah, something like this. It would this. be kind of car and driver type of thing. <laughs> are we going to out the stylist? You know, are we going to, sh- sh- hey, it's purely cosmetic. It's purely cosmetic. And I You're will say I did have yourself. I did have some input on the design of the aesthetics of the hood, right? And yeah, talking yeah. with them. Yeah. But we don't know if it's going to work. So is this an aftermarket deal? Or yeah, it's an deal? aftermarket. Actually, I, Lightning ah, has seen okay, it. Like, okay. You saw it. At, I, I think Lightning's still floating around. You oh, saw it at Long Beach, I mean, the right? Car, the car is stunning. And the carbon fiber, Anderson Composites knocked it out of the park with the yeah. carbon fiber. The yeah. fit um, is it's, perfect. It's absolutely incredible. And, and by the way, the, the, the Anderson guys aren't just all for aesthetics. Like, they are pretty sharp engineers. Yeah. Y- yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a stunning car. I'd love to get you over here when it's done and outfitted with sensors the way we spoke about. You know, I, I have well, the car in my hands now. We should We should come over there and just take a quick look and see what you guys think. Uh, look, it, we we made the carbon fiber hood because we wanted the hood scoop uh, reminiscent of, of the Mach 1. So that was the purpose of it. And then as we started to make it, try to make it functional, it wasn't like wind tunnel tested. So the aerodynamics of this car, the, the air could hit the front end of this car and fly right over the roof of it. Maybe air is not even touching the, the hood of this car. We have no idea. So this is kind of why I, I propose the idea of testing it. Uh, with you guys, I can't think of anybody else who can who can test this the way you guys can. You got you got my attention. I'll tell you. <laughs> and Bill, any way I can help you get where you want to be? I mean, I'm on. Well, thank you, kind sir. I appreciate it. Being yeah. honored. It was- I mean, that that thing you you did uh, on my Bonneville truck. <laughs> oh my God, is that 20 years ago? Uh- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least it sure feels like it. It yeah. feels like it was yesterday, actually. Yeah, I know it feels like yesterday, but I think it actually is. Maybe. Yeah, I know. Don't tell anybody, though. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but I've appreciated that and never really told you that. Oh, you kidding me? It, 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 hey, it, like I said, even to get to talk to you and share some of your experience, it's an honor and a privilege. So being a part of anything that you would ever do, that's, that's an honor, well, truly. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Well, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a kick in the ass. Yeah, yeah, why not hit different stuff? Uh, yeah. We're chasing horsepower, so how bad can it be? The Chrysler side of the, I'm really admiring those cats and yeah. where they're going with their yeah. products. It's kind of in your face, uh, electric vehicles, while the, they're also paying attention. But, but they have to satiate their core, correct? Yeah. But they have, they have to go towards the future. And they have, they're not, it's not like they're going to. One thing's for sure, Stellantis is not going to follow anybody's lead, and they're going to do whatever they do the way they want to do it, but they understand that, you know, you have to move on. So they're going to keep yep. the, the the style that they have marketed over the past 10 years or whatever with, the, with this Hellcat, or forever, that, you know, they've done it. But um, you, you, they're, they're going to segue in their own way. To some extent here, you're dealing with Italians. <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. you, you know what i mean the agnelli yeah. the the uh, fiat that they are now i'm telling you and they're inventive they're passionate as hell mm-hmm. and we're dealing with them on a, a future power system that we're doing for the army for you know hybrid mm-hmm. for various vehicles i can't wait <laughs> <laughs> I can't either, man. It's, this is such a kick in the ass. 
And hybrid. I want to do. I want to do hybrid hot rod powertrains where we're building projects like yours or older vehicles, and you do the hybrid thing. I did some testing for BMW quite a while ago now when they were developing what their hybrid seven, uh, the seven series. Yeah. Where we had a twin turbo DOHC uh, V8, and right behind it we had a motor generator, and of course uh, batteries back under the package tray, mm-hmm. uh, rear seat. That thing was stunning, <laughs> and it wasn't all wheel drive. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the future is bright. How about a Deuce Roadster hybrid? Huh? <laughs> It all is like that sick and wrong? Fun. I mean, what, what you know? I, I I like it. The issue has just been packaging. That they're so such tiny cars. You know, it's just like I know someone's like, let's I do know. a sixty Cadillac. I'm like, yeah, because you could fit so much battery. Besides, the engine in that Cadillac was 500 pounds to begin with. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the all wheel drive thing. I, I finally got my taste in in this Cadillac Blackwing, mm-hmm. which is. You know, a limited production thing. They they were gonna only do two hundred and seventy five of them. They ended up doing around eight hundred of them. And it, it's the large four door Cadillac, but it's DOHC twin turbo, twin intercoolers, all wheel drive. You know, four wheel and all wheel steering. This thing is every performance thing you could think of. Sounds uh, like you're describing a beautiful lady. <laughs> I kind of uh, that's yeah. the sickness. That's the sickness that we have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, nobody appreciates a beautiful car more than me, it's or like, a beautiful lady, for that matter. I <laughs> if you have the car and you, and you, you can get her in it, absolutely. Oh, then, you, then you've won. Home. This is it. So anyhow, this car is only five hundred and fifty horsepower. It's not a blown thing, but that 10 speed shifts so quickly. You know, you got the paddle shift if you want to use it. Jesus. I'm going to go out and drive it. To hear you say I'm that done with you guys. I'm <laughs> to hear you say that about a modern vehicle is wonderful. That just shows you how lucky we all are to be experiencing what we are right now. Oh, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. Let's do this. Let's do it. Yeah. It's been an honor. All right. So- have you on. Gail, thanks so much. Well, We've got some stuff to dig into. We're going to do some intercooler testing and maybe a Whipple install, and uh, I'll bring the Mustang by. And uh, uh, I, I, I love the uh, the testing portion of it. And, Bill, I tell you, if you go back and watch the YouTube video of my Ford Lightning on, on Banks' dyno, you will understand heat, <laughs> how we made nine oh, horsepower I, I, and, like, 50 pound-feet of torque or something because it was just yeah. it was like a hair dryer blowing into the engine. Heat, exactly. Heat, heat exactly. kills, man. Heat kills it. And right. keep in mind that, you know, when summer rolls around in Texas, you know, it's 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 no longer— It's only, a, it's only 103 today, so it's not— Yeah. Really. So where are you at in Texas? Right outside of San Antonio, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right in the hill country. So it's, <laughs> you it's a little cooler. To, you, Got a little uh, more land. Southwest Research Institute is there. Yes, I've sir. done I've done some uh, marine engines and tested them there for the Navy, uh, right near town. You got that kind of canal in downtown area? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is that River, still going? Yeah, right near Riverwalk. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Good. You gotta let me know when you're out, out in this area for sure. You got it. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yes, sir. Hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Uh, you talk about the house that you're building. You guys go go and have a conversation about the garage that he's building, which is uh, it is uh, calling it a garage is is not really fair <laughs> to to call it that. But it is a, a, an incredible facility, to say the least. Well, an update on that. When we hang up here, I will be going outside because the stairs, the railing, the the uh, uh, storefront, the the uh, all the stone for the front, yeah. The rock doors are on the way. We're 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 getting there. So we're a couple months away. And, and Mr. Banks, I would be honored and privileged if you were out in this area that I would give you uh, a, a personal tour throughout. The well, uh, two things, two two things. I've been, I've been calling you, Bill. Please call me, Gail. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 
it, yeah, it makes me younger when somebody does. <laughs> okay, Gail, let's yeah. go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Just took 10 years off my age there. All right. And I will take you up on that. Thank you, sir. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. You got it. It's All been right. A privilege. Guys, Same thanks so Same much. Uh, Gail, always a pleasure. Uh, Banks Power, that's the website. Uh, I think I'm getting that right. Banks Power. Is that it, Jay? Jay yeah, just bank, bankspower.com. Bankspower.com. That's the website. Follow them on social media. Can't wait to see you guys at SEMA, and uh, let's definitely have you back on the show again. Well, we're going to have to because we're going to do some testing, and we're going to have to come back and talk about some some results uh, to see yeah. where, where we well, ended up. with some projects. Of, yeah, we've got a we, few projects. We, we've got Bill's Mopar, and we've got your Ford. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Good projects. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We're going to wrap it up. Until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Do you own? Do you rent your home? Sure you do. And it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling your policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you have so much to do already around your home. Why not make it easy? Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see just how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. All month long, the biggest movies are streaming free on Pluto TV's Popcorn Summer Movies. Watch star-studded blockbusters like Titanic and Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Or fall in love with charming rom-coms like Hitch and How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. The best part? Pluto TV is 100% free. No credit cards, not even a sign-up. Plus, Pluto TV has hundreds of channels with thousands more movies, TV shows, and more. Download the Pluto TV app on all your favorite devices and start streaming now. Pluto TV. Drop in. Watch free.